What's up my ninjas? Dart Frog Ninja here, coming at you like a shuriken. Today on the Dart Discussion, we're going to talk about fruit fly cultures. What do you need to make them? Why do you need to make them? And most importantly, I'm going to show you how I make them. Without further ado, let's get hopping. All right, my ninjas, let's talk about what a fruit fly culture is. This is a fruit fly culture. So if you're new to the hobby and you don't like having bugs, you don't like being around bugs, this might not be the hobby for you because you are gonna have to make and maintain a steady supply of flightless fruit flies. These right now, these are high day fruit flies. Um, basic, the, basically the one of the largest breeds of fruit flies. Since my guys are big, they need large. There's melon gaster, which are used for froglets, thumbnails, and smaller darts. Um, but these guys I use because my guys are full grown. As you can see in here, they're everywhere. I have it marked on here. I made this culture on February 3rd, and I marked down that they're high day because I also do have golden high day as well. Basically, they're a little bit smaller, they're goldish in color, um, and they breed a little bit quicker. But here you go. This is a basic fruit fly culture. This is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna explain to you what everything is, what you're gonna need to make them, and how in the next segment of the video. So there you go. All right, my ninjas, let's go over what you're gonna need in order to make a fruit fly culture. First, let's start with the basics. Get yourself a pot. All right, and you're gonna need a stove or an oven. That's basic, I'm not even gonna really show you that. Next, you will need to grab yourself some water. You can use distilled water, RO water, which is reverse osmosis. And in some cases, you can actually buy the bottled spring water like this as well. Don't use chlorinated. If you're gonna use chlorinated, you have no other choice. Make sure you get yourself some of that chemical solution you put in that takes out all the harmful chemicals um, like you would get for fish, like you would do for fish and for other water that you use for frogs. But I've used distilled water. I've used it for over five years now. They, it's fine. So go with distilled water if you can, it's cheap. You can get it at the grocery store. This is like 88 cents for a full jug. So pretty cool. So you're gonna need that. Next, a 32 ounce plastic deli cup. You can buy these uh, at some grocery stores. I believe you can get them at Walmart. Uh, I get mine online. I usually go to Josh's Frogs because they have some of the best prices and their shipping isn't killer and they ship really quick. So I buy them in bulk, um, usually 30 to 40 at a time. There's that. Next up, you've got your choices of two different lids. I'm gonna show you my favorite. This is a cloth vented lid. I like it because it's got this layer of cloth over these holes. Fruit fly larva can't get out of it. Um, and you don't have to worry about anything getting into it either. So uh, it does have that. I do like these vent, the cloth vented lids. And then your next choice, are these plastic vented lids. I have a ton of these because I accidentally ordered them and uh, I've just started using them. They're not that bad. A lot of people have issues with them. Um, I don't, They. I haven't had any larva come out of the holes or anything get into them. So I've been using a, a tire stack so that way it saves me money. Um, so there's these. So you got your cloth and your vented. Again, I prefer the cloth, but because I have a surplus amount of these guys, I'm using these. So, and this is probably what I'm gonna use today. So there you go. Next, let's get to the two probably most important things that you're gonna need is first, this bag of what looks like straw. This is Excelsior. Basically what this is, it's wood shavings. Um, you can buy that from any online uh, breeder store. You can even get it in bulk and then shred it up yourself from I believe Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever hardware store, big box hardware store you might have. Um, and it, it turns out to be cheaper that way. And I, I only recommend doing that if you have a ton of dart frogs and you're gonna need to make like, let's say 10 to 20 cultures or more at a time. I only make one culture a week. Um, so, you know, I only need to buy small bags and it's cheap. I get it from Josh's Frogs. Again, another plug for them. Um, 
fast shipping, it goes in there and this acts as a uh, surface area for the flies to crawl on. So you can add like a hundred flies into a new culture and they will crawl and live on this. They will go down to the bottom and the, the base and eat the food, um, but they live in on this and then the larva can crawl up and uh, on the sides of the, of the cup or even on this and they pupate and turn into flies. So this is basically your fly's home. So you definitely need yourself some Excelsior. You can use coffee filters. Um, I've done that once um, and it worked out pretty well. It's just the coffee filter tends to get a little floppy and then uh, you have to deal with that when the culture gets older, either falling out when you're tapping out flies or you know, it's just, it just becomes a pain. So you can use coffee filters, they're fine, um, but I tend to, to go with the Excelsior. It also helps with the humidity. So the flies like it to keep it humid in their cultures. It helps them produce more. So when it keeps the media at the bottom wetter um, and it doesn't dry out because if you dry out the media, your flies can't eat, they're not gonna produce and then you won't have any flies. So there you go. Now, the last important bit, you need yourself some fruit fly media, okay? There are various, various uh, brands out uh, right now I have Josh's frogs again in front of me. Uh, I do like their media. They were one of the original, I think, companies to kind of sell their media. I believe when the start of the hobby started to get to boom, they, so they're one of the originals. I believe Any Herps uh, was another one, as well as uh, Black Jungle, I believe. And now there's plenty of different brands you can buy. I like Josh's frogs. I also like Rapashi. Uh, I've been using, I was using that for the longest time and then I switched to this. So I like those two. And then there are private uh, individuals who have their smaller businesses who have fruit fly media out. There's two in particular that I'd like to try. So if you guys are watching this Tink Man, I would love to try uh, your fruit fly media and I would definitely feature it as its own video. And then Frog Daddy, I know you subscribe, buddy. I know you have your own uh, fruit fly media out. If you want to send me a sample and I can feature it on my dark discussion uh, for another episode or something like that, definitely let me know um, and I'll definitely hook you guys up and give you guys a free promotion. We'll try it out. But uh, I've heard great things about both of those two. So if you do, if you guys are watching this again, shameless plug, if you want to send me something for a free sample to try it out and have a video, I can do that. But I've heard great things about those two. Um, but again, there's other media you can buy. You can even make your own. Um, back when I started keeping dart frogs, well, it was like maybe in the early 2000s, maybe 1999. Oh no, it's probably about 2000. Um, there was no pre-made media. You couldn't buy this stuff really from anybody. So you had to make your own. And I made mine, uh, I believe it was with potato flakes, some vinegar, brewer's yeast, and there was something else. Maybe I'm missing one or two ingredients. And you had to keep them in mason jars, so no plastic cups. And then you had pantyhose that you would have to cut up, rubber band off and tie around the tops of those said mason jars. It was a pain, it worked, and I fed my frogs, but it is so much easier to, to have the lids and the plastic cups and the pre-made media, but you can make your own media. It does work well. I know people who do it and it works fantastically for them. Me, I'm a little lazy. I would rather have pre-made media from somebody or another company. So there you go. Um, one last little bit, <laughs> get yourself a spoon. This is primarily, this isn't used for cooking. So don't use one that you use for cooking that you're going to mix and you're going to mix stew or something else. This is one that I use only for this. And uh, I use it for maybe stirring my leaves when I boil my leaves, when I disinfect my leaves, uh, when I collect leaves from outside, like magnolia leaves. Um, this is used for dart frog stuff only. So I don't cook with it. Um, and then when I clean it off, I also don't wash it off with soap. Uh, I use warm hot water out of the tap and then I dry it off, um, but I make sure there's no particles, it doesn't stink and there's nothing on it so I don't take the chance of uh, contaminating anything. So there you go guys, these are the basic things you need to make a fruit fly culture. Now let's get into it and I'm going to show you how to make everything step by step.
All right, my ninja, step one is you're gonna need to boil yourself some water. So first, take your distilled water. I use two-third cup of water. The packaging says to use three-fourths cup, but I find that if you use three-fourths cup, it turns the media soupy, and you really don't want that. And maybe I'll add just a tiny bit more because stuff, when it boils, it's gonna evaporate, and you're gonna lose a little bit of the water volume. But, like I said, you're gonna wanna bring this water in this pot to a rolling boil. And I will show you what a rolling boil looks like here in one second when it gets going. All right, my ninjas, while we are waiting for that to come to a nice rolling boil, we can go ahead and do another step while we're waiting, and which is adding your fruit fly media to this here deli cup. Now I have plastic tablespoons. It says to use half a cup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do one. I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do three, and then I'm gonna give it like maybe three and a half tablespoons. There, that's three and a half tablespoons. That doesn't look like a whole lot, guys. It doesn't, it really doesn't. But when I add water to this, it is going to get very thick, and uh, it is going to change the volume of this is gonna change, because you don't want media up to here, because that creates less surface space. Up to about like, about maybe half an inch, of media is what you're going to want, maybe to about an inch at the most, and then the rest of it you want just for the Excelsior. So here we go. As you can hear, the water is boiling. So let me go ahead and show you guys what that looks like here. That's hot water. That is steaming. It's rolling. If you listen carefully, that is a rolling boil. That is a rolling boil, guys, and that's important. Now, why do you want a rolling boil? Uh, because with a rolling boil, it's gonna activate some of the mold inhibitors in the different media, and Josh's frogs especially, they have a mold inhibitor that you're gonna want to have so that way you don't grow some nasty molds up in your, uh, up in your culture. So. I'm gonna go ahead and what you're gonna take next is you're gonna take that rolling boil water, you're gonna take your cup. Now this is gonna be hot, so don't burn yourselves. You're gonna add in said water. And I'm gonna use almost all of it right now. And what I like to do at this point is I like to take it and I like to stir. You know, scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. If you do cooking or baking, it's kinda like baking a cake, right? You're gonna wanna Stir and keep that so that way, sorry, I'm trying to adjust the angle as I'm going. This is real time, guys. I didn't rehearse any of this. Um, you want to stir, stir, stir. I probably can add a little bit more water. Okay, now you can see this. All right, stirring. And now what you wanna do is you want the consistency of uh, your media to be about like that of peanut butter. You don't want it too watery or you don't want it too firm. Um, so you want it to be about like peanut butter level. Um, Right now, I think I've got it to where I, I need it to be. And I'll show that off to you guys right now. That's about where you want it to be, okay? And that looks like that's more than an inch, but it's not because I tilted it. As you can see, it's about half an inch. And I made sure I mixed fairly well. I did a kind of a crappy job this time because I am filming, but um, that is basically what you want it to look like. Now, if you live in a drier, less humid atmosphere, let's say you live in like Arizona, somewhere out there where humidity is a problem, you're probably gonna wanna add a little bit more water to this to make sure that it doesn't solidify and harden up too much. Cause if, like I said, you want this to be a little wet so that the maggots, when the flies lay, uh, lay eggs and the maggots hatch, they can eat this uh, and any, you know, you might get a little bit of blue, the blue mold and um, they'll eat that as well. But if you do end up getting a lot of mold in your culture, once you have flies in it, just take your mister, spray some distilled water in it or whatever, 
and that'll take care of it. It just means it's getting kind of dry in there. So this is what you want. It's, I'm in Virginia, the humidity is not too bad. So consistency of peanut butter, that's what you want guys. Next step is gonna be adding the Excelsior and I'll show you that here in one second. All right, my ninjas, one of the final parts is taking your Excelsior and putting it in here. Now, how much do you put in here, you ask? Well, this is the messy part. This is gonna get everywhere. So you're gonna have to sweep and clean up after you're done, especially if you live with anybody else. Um, they probably won't be happy if they see this lying around or you know on the counter, on the floor. So you're gonna wanna clean up after yourself. So that's another part, I'm not gonna film that. Just know that you need to clean up after yourself after you're done using this. You're gonna see, it's gonna go everywhere here in a minute. But this is Excelsior. What you need is a nice chunk of Excelsior here and it's kind of tough so you're gonna have to rip at it and that's why it's uh, messy yeah this is going everywhere guys this is going everywhere all right so you got yourself a nice big old hunk like this what you do is you take it you ball it up like a nice softball baseball size somewhere in there and then boom, it goes right in there. I could have added actually a little bit more if I wanted to, but just keep in mind guys, if you add a ton of this and you're packed all the way to the top and it's pressing up against that top, the maggots are going to end up getting up there and they're gonna be all over your top lid. And that's fine because you can then take that top lid and you can feed your frogs uh, the maggots, but if you don't want them getting out, if you're using these cloth guys right here, if you're using this, they can claw crawl out of that. So keep that in mind. But if you're using the cloth ended ones, don't worry, they can't get out. But I usually pack mine up to about right, right here, maybe a little bit more, but it's never touching the top. So then you take your top, pop that bad boy on. There you go. You got yourself a fruit fly culture. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna let this sit for a couple hours, two, maybe two hours, three hours and then you will add your flies. You do not add your flies in right away. If you add your flies in right now, they're gonna die. You're gonna cook them, they're gonna, this is burning hot. This is really hot to the touch right now, so you need to let this cool off completely. Uh, you can see the steam, the humidity is building up because of the heat, um, but you, like I said, wait two to three hours, and then you can add your flies to this. So, right, it's simple. I'll see if I can show you guys how to do it real quick. Um, again, it's, it's really, really easy. A few tips though, like I said earlier, if you have mold start growing in your fruit fly cup, it's probably gonna happen and it happens to most people in the hobby, pretty much like 90% of people go through this. Don't freak out. Uh, just take your mister, your hand mister. I, I strongly recommend buying one if you don't have one and go ahead and spray some of your distilled water, your RO water, your spring water, spray some in here. Don't drench it. So it's a pool, but spray enough in here, that helps. And then when the maggots are out, they actually do end up eating some of the mold as well as the media down here. So just keep that in mind and then you're good to go. So I'll come back at you guys in a couple of hours and then I will show you how exactly or what exactly you need to do to add the flies. It's really simple, you just tap them in and you run a tap in between anywhere from 50 to like 100 or 150 flies. Uh, don't count them, just kind of eyeball it. I, I do it a lot, um, so I don't count them. I just kind of eyeball it and tap it enough and I think, okay, that's enough. So I'll come back at you guys in a couple hours, show you how that's done, and that should be the end of the video for this week's dart discussion. Uh, I guess I'm going to clean up in the meantime because as you can see, there's a mess. So, all right guys, I will come back at you in a little bit. All right, my ninjas, this is it. The final step you need to do in order to make yourself a fruit fly culture is adding in fruit flies from another existing culture. Now I showed this culture off earlier in the video. As you can see, it's, it's, it's booming. Um, it's it's um, not even in frame, I'm sorry. It's booming, uh, it's got a lot of activity. There's a lot of flies in here. Um, so what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this. And then if you no notice, it does have a date of February 3rd. Now, I'm gonna talk about the shelf life, the life of the fruit fly. Basically, when you make a high day culture like this, it's gonna take it around a month 
to produce and you're gonna get big booms like this. I fed out of this like two or three times already so there was more flies in here than this. Um, so this has actually been hit a couple of times by me, but you're going to get big booms like this and it, this is going to be about a month old to a little bit more than a month and you're going to feed out of this until there's no flies left and you just toss it. But for high day, it takes about a month. Now if you're feeding melon gaster fruit flies for, like I said, smaller darts, the froglets uh, and other creatures that are going to eat smaller fruit flies, this, uh, they produce a bit faster. They're smaller, um, so they produce within about two to three weeks um, if the conditions are right. You're gonna wanna take this, you're gonna wanna have this stored somewhere where it's gonna be between like room temperature to maybe you don't wanna get up too far above 80 degrees where it's at. So I would say in the 70s, if you can keep it like 74, 75, that's great. That's probably ideal. They'll produce a little bit faster. Um, but I have mine in a bin. Uh, again, storing them is up to you. Uh, I like to keep mine in a Sterilite bin. Uh, if you've seen it in previous videos, uh, but I like to do that. And I, when it's during the winter, I keep the lid on and it keeps the humidity and the temperature where I need it to be. During the summertime, I like to crack the lid or take the lid completely off because it is humid and it gets warm and they produce fine like that and everything stays here. Uh, unfortunately, I did have the lid on and now that it's starting to get warmer, it this is a little soupy and it doesn't smell too good when it gets like that. So you don't want it to get soupy like this guy. So this is my bad. Uh, that was just, it was too humid down there. I got to start leaving the top of that Tupperware thing open. So here you go. I'm gonna add them and then we're done. And oh, one more final step after. You're gonna have to tap them like this because they're gonna be all up at the top. And they're gonna get everywhere, so you gotta, gotta have to... This is definitely a two-hand job because you're gonna wanna tap that other. All right, guys, and that's probably enough right there. So again, tap, continually tap until you get the top on. Now there are gonna be a few that are gonna miss the container and they're going to get in your way and that's fine. Um, just if you can hunt them down, hunt them down and toss them in. If not, you're just gonna have fruit flies in your house. And that's probably gonna be an inevitability, regardless if you miss them or not, you're gonna get flies that escape your enclosures. Um, unless you have a biopod or something else that's completely sealed because that, they have not gotten out of the biopod, so which is pretty neat. But, uh, there you go, guys. There's probably a good, uh, again, put a good 50 to 100 or 150 in there. And then when you're done, the last thing I like to do is I put the day's date, the month and the date on it. Today is March 7th. So I'm gonna pop a 03 slash 07 for the date. And then if you keep multiple species, which I do, like I said, I have golden high day and regular high day, I just pop an H, Y for high day on there. I'm gonna be keeping melon gasters here probably this summer, so it'll, be putting an M or an ML or something like that on there. And there you go. So there you go. And then you put them away in your bin and then you wait about a month and I will have another culture like that. And you cycle them out. And once you're done with the flies, there's no more flies and you can throw it out and start all over again. Um, a couple of things to note that eventually you're gonna have to replace your fruit flies from a fresh new culture from somewhere. Uh, fruit flies, you can breed them pretty much to the point to where their flies are going to appear smaller and there's going to be less of them because they're just genetically keep inbreeding and breeding and breeding and that's what happens in nature if you inbreed you get uh, kind of anomalies uh, deformities things like that when you when when uh, there's a lot of inbreeding so with these flies I'm going to the reptile show in two weeks I'm going to pick up probably one or two new cultures get uh, another set of flies going and then Hopefully I will get bigger, even more bigger booms and more bigger fly and bigger flies, more bigger. Um, but right now it's, we're good. 
but just keep that in mind. You can't just keep going with the same fruit flies for, you know, forever. Otherwise you're going to see less, less fruit flies when they produce, smaller fruit flies when they produce. So keep that in mind. There you go, guys. That's how you make a fruit fly culture. And that's it for this week's episode of the Dart Discussion. All right, guys, I'm signing off and saying frog on.